Hi, and welcome to the channel, The Code School. Today, we are going to learn about uh, Spring Boot RESTful Web Services implementation, how Spring Boot supports the RESTful Web Services implementation. RESTful Web Services is very popular and very common uh, kind of de facto today to implement any web services APIs. Uh, APIs are basically a contract uh, to be used between the two machines, like uh, services, which is going to generate the response and the uh, consumer or client, which is going to consume these re responses. So RESTful is kind of very simplified uh, web services. It's a more of architectural style, which is based on the HTTP and HTTPS spread, uh, protocols. Um, it's simplified in terms of we compare to uh, SOAP web services. Which, which is more uh, complex and suits to the enterprise level of applications. This is more simplified because this focus remains on the resource, uh, the common resource or uniform resources. So we categorize the domain objects uh, based on the business uh, needs, business functions needs, and break them into the resources. And then we uh, create the common URIs for it um, as, this is based on the HTTP protocol, hypertext uh, transfer protocol. Uh, hypertext uh, transfer protocol is based on the various methods like a port, uh, put, post, get, delete options, head. A lot of these methods, like a kind of seven or eight different methods, are supported in the HTTP. HTTP. And uh, similarly, RESTful try to give a parallel uh, method operations here. So we call it as the operations. Uh, on a resources. So you define a resources. Resources can be anything. Suppose my um, um, domain is railway ticket booking. So my uh, domain can be ticket, right? So uh, then I can have uh, operations like uh, booking of the ticket. So if the booking of the ticket requires at some data payload, data payload of the, uh, the traveler, the passengers information like what is the name, age, preference of the birth, all this uh, source destination he is traveling to, or the date he is traveling on. So such informations can go as a JSON information, uh, but that's not restricted to JSON only. Uh, since it's simplified, it supports the different types of payloads, but JSON is most popular among all other types of data content types. So it can be sent over the HTTP methods uh, like a post, if it's a operation like a create or write operations has to happen at the server side, like a booking can um, basically create a record in the railway uh, book, uh, booking uh, system. So basically that method maps, the post method maps to the create operation. Similarly, if you are trying to fetch out the information for against the a specific booking that has been done previously. You are trying to read an operation, read uh, information from the server side, which is the ticket booking system in our uh, example. So we are trying to do the read operation, which is more of like HTTP get method. So similarly, if you have some of the changes has to happen if, if it's supported in a railway booking system. So that operation of a modification of the existing uh, record can be happen over the HTTP put. And uh, in the REST side, we call it as a update operation. And uh, if the booking gets canceled and record has to be cleaned up from the railway booking system, it has to be a delete operation, which is also a delete method in the HTTP. So th this is a kind of like a very high level overview of uh, how HTTP methods are can be converted into the RESTful web services. We'll see through the demo of uh, a Spring Boot how we can basically implement using the Spring Boot of a same thing, right? So we take the take the example and then we'll uh, implement it. So these methods are uh, commonly called as a CRUD, C-R-U-D, which is basically create, read, update, and delete. 
So these are more common operations that comes along the RESTful web services. So all of the all of the major operations, right, uh, which which uh, has to be done on the resources, uh, sums up with the CRUD operations. So let's see through the example quickly, and uh, we'll get more about how this RESTful web services are simplified, and Spring Boot even makes it more simpler to implement the RESTful web services. All right, here is a uh, Spring Boot RESTful web services implementation pre-created for the interest of time. Uh, on the top uh, folder level, we have SRC main Java. In, inside the Java uh, folder, we have uh, pack our application packages are starting. So here we see at the very top level and under the com, um, the code school dot uh, spring rest uh, package, we have a Spring REST application. This is the Spring Boot app class. Uh, all Spring Boot uh, applications will have uh, similar classes, which will be annotated with the Spring Boot application annotation. Uh, we have a controller class, which is basically named as a student controller. This represents this st uh, student uh, resource. And this is marked as a REST controller uh, annotation. And uh, this resource is basically represents the collection of students here. So uh, the way we mark it is like a, at the request uh, mapping. At the request mapping is a annotation provided by the Spring, which basically interprets the resources at the class level and uh, the sub resources at the operation level. So at the operation level, which is the basically a, at the Java equivalent, this is the methods basically which can be also ideally marked as a request ma mapping. And then within the uh, parenthesis, we um, inform about if there is a further uh, URI or sub, sub arguments like whether this supports what kind of methods and what different kind of configurations of the RESTful you want to pass in. Um, Spring Boot comes up with very interesting approach of like a, creating a shorthand for all uh, detail configuration that we used to give it inside the request mapping. For example, uh, if you go at the spring, uh, sorry, uh, request mapping, you will find out like you no know, name, value, path, params, headers, consumes, produces, along with that, the list of the methods which it was supporting. So coming back here, if you see all the methods that we have designed here uh, as an operations to be supported for the resources of students, like uh, getting the resource, getting the student, getting all students, um, deleting the student, putting the student, that means updating the student data, um, and then posting, adding the student information in our record. So all these four, five types of operations, which is like a two get operations, top two, and uh, then three modification operations, which is basically deleting and updating and also inserting or adding the resources or creating the resources. So this is all commonly uh, called as a CRUD operations. And these all CRUD operations are marked with uh, request mapping either or the shorthands, which is basically con configures, pre-configures the according to the get operations or delete operations and gives you as a shortcut. So these are our, basically the methods which are uh, defined here. So we get a 100% of the students information, which is a list of student uh, collection. Uh, here we, uh, we have passed the path variable. This is the, another interesting annotation, which is there. It's very important in the RESTful web services. Um, when you pass the path param, or path variable, you can basically take the path variable, which is after the slash, after entire of your URI is written, or in the middle of the URIs. Suppose after this also, suppose if I want to pass something else, I can basically uh, put it in between of the URI or at the end of the URI. Anywhere in the URI, if I uh, pass on some of the information, that can be mapped to my method argument this way. So I can collect them by um, putting the path variable and using the same name matching with whatever the name I put it in the uh, mapping, get mapping here or whatever mapping, right? So if it's a delete mapping 
or if it's a post um, if it's update mapping what whatever mapping the path variable can be read like this so let's go to the postman let's start this project first so how you start the project you just click on this play button and you will see the spring startup blocks will start coming once we see our application started we switch to uh, postman and in the postman i have created the collection of the different uh, restful app uh, url that is possible for this so i have a slash student which is basically maps to the default method here so slash student uh, students at the class level maps to this default method which says get all students uh, detail so if i uh, send the request basically it is a kind of get request which is sending the um, content type as the application json it is expecting basically uh, to have the request payload or uh, uh, response payload coming as a if uh, there is any content exchange happening that should be happening in terms of application content application slash json which is basically the json payload so there is no um, data as of now created so let's jump to the another method which is the post method and we call we have named it as a add student and here we are passing the um, body payload which is basically uh, sending some of the json um, informations which is basically uh, sending the id name address and date of birth four informations for the student uh, once we hit it, if you can notice, this is the method, HTTP method as a post. And once we hit that, basically this information is posted back. If we go back to the get student, we can click on here and now we get the information because we have inserted successfully here. So that's why the get student, when we go over the default method in here, this is returning the information. So the last method here, the add student was executed in the just previous attempt of uh, posting the data from here. So this has saved one record and we are getting the record back here. So suppose if you want to repost the data, suppose if we change the ID to 200 and change the name to a uh, different name, country to a different country, and his date of year only yet going to change and we post it we should see two records now which is like this so suppose if i want to uh, get specific in information suppose i want to get the information related to matthew which is nothing but the path variable we are passing the path variable remember that that is going to map into the id variable into the method operation of a get student and we will be getting the specific information, which means the moment we did that, uh, the same method, same uh, operation mapped to the second operation basically. So the second get operation is going to execute because the first get is not having support for the ID and the second one has it. So this maps to here. So see how this uh, Spring Boot internally going to take care of all this restful uh, operations that is go going to hit the mapping is basically going to find out which method can handle the operation that is coming and based on this id search the specific resource is going to get return so this student collection 200 to uh, 200 id is going to be filtered out and then a response is going to made and send back and remember all the places we are putting the content type as a application slash json in a payload itself in the raw payload if we sorry the header itself so header we are passing that content type as a application json so since uh, we are fixing that uh, server res uh, responses in a similar fashion because the json is a kind of default payload from the spring boot but you can easily change that using the request mapping or the get mapping 
to something else. Suppose your payload is not a JSON, it is YML, uh, YAML, or um, XML, or HTML, or any, any different types of uh, content that you want to exchange with the, the client that, that you can do it. So let's move on to the update. Suppose we have done uh, something wrong here with the get and we see the different information. Um, so Matthew has a date of birth as a 99 and we want to change the date of birth of Matthew. and update his name uh, as Matthew Varghese, a uh, full name, and date of birth as uh, from the 99 to 98. And we send it and we see the update is happening. That is 200 success. So 200 OK is like a HTTP 200 OK. That means the operation was successful. And if we come back and then we fetch the all re responses, we should see the Matthews name is updated with the full name and date of birth updated with the different date of birth that we wanted to. So going back here, if we want to delete any resources, we can give a path variable as a information, whatever. So suppose if we choose Matthew to get deleted from the system, we just send a request with the ID 200, which belongs to Matthew, and then Matthew record should be deleted. When we do the fetch, we see, the 200 is deleted. We can confirm by sending the 200 here. We'll get the server error as we are not implementing the handling of the exception. This returns this way. This is um, this is the response we are getting. All right, so that's all about the get, put, post, delete. We have uh, gone through all of the operations. We'll see you in the uh, next video. Hope you have enjoyed the video. Uh, we'll meet in the next video.